Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are restoring this beautiful old Miller Falls egg beater hand drill. So without further ado, let's dive in. This is a very simple, well used and in poor shape egg beater drill. It's a Miller Falls egg beater drill. It's a very simple one. It only has the, the bottom gear. It doesn't have the back balancing gear. There isn't the uh, the compartment in the handle. And there's just a few other things. It's a very simple one. And it is in pretty bad shape. You can see the handle doesn't even go all the way around. It needs not only lubrication and cleaning, but a good bit of repair work. Here, this is a screw that's supposed to go through the handle into the large gear. Unfortunately, uh, at some point it stripped out and the previous owner thought rather than retapping or putting a new bolt in there he was just going to peen it over and basically turned it into a rivet and i'm still trying to work with it hoping that maybe i can turn it off um, until eventually i realized oh no it's a rivet i'm gonna have to work on that a little later so let's disassemble everything else here is a small retaining uh, wheel this holds the large gear against the small gear on some of the nicer ones there's a second gear farther up to hold the other side to balance it so when your hand is running around and pushing it it doesn't actually lift the large gear off of the small gear so that comes off, and then we can start working on the chuck. Uh, the chucks on these are really, really simple. They just unscrew on this, and then there's a, a middle core, and then the outside shell. Those are held together with this little set screw. Uh, I like to actually have a magnetic holder around that I can put all the small pieces in. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight for basically nothing. And it's great for these because they all have tiny little pieces that like to run away. And inside here you can see all three jaws that then fit into there. Most of this is held together with peened pins that go through. Uh, some of them aren't even pinned, they're just peened, they're just pins that go through. And uh, those drive out really nicely if you have a good set of punches. A good set of punches is an invaluable thing to have for someone who's restoring tools. You just want to be very careful. Ooh, yeah, in that case, I dropped out the thrust bearing. There's a bearing inside there that I didn't realize, um, but it had all these tiny little 8 millimeter BBs that went all over the place. Uh, some of these you want to be very careful when pounding against the casting that you don't break the casting. So you want to always have something supporting it. And if you ever have something that needs to fall out, I put a little magnetic tray underneath to catch it. The handle is actually threaded onto the main body, and this one was on there really, really well. It was well corroded into place, and so I had to do a good bit of, uh, of twisting, actually putting in the vise to turn it off, but eventually we got that turned off. Now I'm actually going to make a, a little jig to hold the casting of this so I can pound out that rivet that was created in this. Uh, whenever pounding on casting, you want to make sure that the casting is fully supported. Uh, so I'm actually going to be holding things in place so that I'm not uh, uh, I'm not going to end up breaking the casting. So I'm actually just pounding on the rivet, not putting weight into something that is breakable. Here I'm using Metal, metal Restore. Um, I can buy this locally. Um, I also like Evaporust, and WD-40 makes a specialist that is fantastic for it. Uh, I think my favorite is Evaporust. It tends to last a little bit longer, uh, but I haven't found a place where I can get it locally but I can get the, the Metal Restore or the WD-40 Specialist locally. So I'm going to put everything into that to soak, and then we're going to start working on the handle. Uh, for this, I'm going to be scraping off most of the excess. Uh, some of it I'll come in with sandpaper and clean up, especially on the rounded place with a lot of the oil from the hand over the time. But a, uh, a scraper uh, works really, really well. Or you can even use the, the side of a chisel. Um, cleans off the, the excess uh, old varnish incredibly quickly. And uh, it also feels really good in the hand when it's when it's scraped off. Um, so that's my my preferred way of doing it. I might hit it with like a little bit of 400 grit afterwards just to polish it down um, and uh, more or less fill the sandpaper into the edges. And there we are, some 400 grit sandpaper. Using the hand as a bit of a, uh, a shaping on there. <laughs> so uh, the the main handle is pretty easy, but the the larger one, uh, this means the smaller one that goes on the crank was a little bit harder. And the the bolt that goes through that into the crank, I just decided to leave that in place because that is actually riveted in place and it would have caused more difficulty to take that off than it was worth. So for the finish on these, I'm going to do boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Surprise, surprise. It is my all-time favorite finish for a hand tool that you're going to be holding. You get to actually feel the wood and it feels phenomenal. It really soaks into the wood and gives you that, that color you, you want. Um, plus with the, the paste wax on there, it just gives it a good finish. 
Let's change gears for a moment and go back to everything that was in the rust remover. So I had it soaking in there overnight and now we can bring it back off. Now, sometimes the, the paint will clean off of that and I thought it would with this because uh, it, was, it was pretty rough. Um, but apparently it didn't all come off. So most of this we're just going to wipe down and it's good enough, but we can come in with a wire brush and clean off all the excess. And I was hoping at this point that a lot of the paint would come off. Uh, however, uh, it was actually on there a lot better than I was expecting. And I, I, normally if I'm going to repaint it, this isn't a problem. I just go right over top of it. But in this case, I really wanted to do this one up well and get a good binder um, primer to it. Yeah. So I said, no, let's actually take this all the way over to the wire wheel. And the wire wheel really is one of the, the best ways to, to get paint and other things off of the surface and doing it rather um, well without hurting anything. And it leaves it with a fairly good finish that was uh, that's ready for well, finish. <laughs> uh, sandblasting will give you a little bit more etch on there so that it works into it a little bit better. Uh, but the wire wheel is very quick and efficient and most people can, can do this very easily. It also, as long as you, you turn it right, you can get into most nooks and crannies and it's very happy with how well it cleans up afterwards. You get a, a nice little polish on it. And so we can wire wheel it all off and then we are ready to start doing all the taping and masking for the painting. Um, a lot of the parts we want to uh, protect them because that's where the oil is going to go, they're where the, uh, the shafts will ride on. So we need to tape them all off. Uh, anytime you have holes, it's easy to just stick an earplug in them. They expand to fill the hole and then you're not going to get any paint in there. It goes really quick and easy and it's one of the easiest ways to... To, to solve the problem of, oh no, how do I keep paint out of there? For a lot of the surfaces, you can just put some masking tape on there and cut it off flush. You can actually scrape it off on the edge of the steel and it gives you a really nice clean surface. I am going to be taping off the gears. A lot of times I'll just paint them because the gears are pretty loose and it doesn't actually cause any difficulty. But if you really want to make it up nice, do it well. We're going to use a self-etching primer. Uh, and I'm going to put this on in two coats, doing it very, very lightly in between. I'm going to hit it from a couple different directions and let it go in. For the main body, we're going to do black. And then for the wheel, I uh, could do the original red. But in this case, yeah, shot blue because it makes me happy. <laughs> so yes, um, we're going to uh, paint them all up, let them sit, two coats of primer, two coats of paint, and they're ready to take everything off. Make sure you get off all of the tape, take out all of the earplugs, and uh, you're left with a really nice clean surface. If there's some spot that tape or earplugs won't work, a little bit of Vaseline actually does really well, and then it will scrape off um, on top of that. Now with everything taken, uh, taped and, and painted, we can actually start doing the reassembly on this. Now whenever uh, you put two pieces together with metal, you want to make sure that you get a good oil on the surfaces. We want to, we want to keep this um, clean um, and we don't want rust happening inside. And so the easiest way to fix that is if there isn't any, oil, if there isn't any paint on there, that surface needs to have some oil. And so we're going to do a little bit of a, just a simple three in one and go all around all the surfaces. And then especially any place where two metal parts ride on each other, you need to make sure there's oil up. Now the, the shaft that goes down in here, I had to be very careful with that thrust bearing that goes in there. It had uh, the, the little BBs and I actually had to go buy more of them because uh, a couple of them were so rusted that they wouldn't work. And so there's two plates of steel that seven BBs ride on and it's a, a thrust bearing. So as that goes in, it's pushing on those BBs rather than just pushing metal on metal. On all of the pins, I needed to file one end down so it would actually uh, drive through the holes nicely. Um, making sure that those all go in. We also want to make sure we are securing the, uh, the cast pieces. We're not going to be breaking those. And then start putting it all back together, exactly reverse. It's one of the reasons why I like to shoot videos when I'm redoing things is it allows me to see, oh, oh no, that screw goes there, not there. Uh, it allows you to, to go back and check it. This little piece there actually had the, the adjustment so you can move it closer to the large gear. For the chuck, you put in all three of the jaws into the, the main body, and then you can thread on the outside sleeve. And we want to just run it until that set screw lines up with the hole inside, and then we can put that set screw back in, and that's the chuck. It's a very simple design and works incredibly well. Um, it's, yeah, for all of the, the small things, any holes that are smaller than a quarter inch, uh, this is what I use. And I can use a lot of the, the simple twist bits um, in this. And then that then threads onto the main shaft, adding just a little bit of oil. And there you go. 
that is the, the functioning chuck. Now we need to move on to the handle. Um, and this is where we had the problem before because it was, uh, I want to say it was it was 1024. No, it was 1224. Um, and so I actually bumped it up to a 1424 thread and put in a 1424 bolt into that. And that allows me to put the screw through the crank into the large gear. We're going to then polish up all of the wooden pieces, make sure our paste wax is on there good, and polish it up so we have a nice, clean, smooth surface. Threading the handle back on, you want to make sure it's threaded down to the point where you can then fit that pin that goes through. So lining up the holes, make sure it's the way it should be. Uh, in this case, we want to make sure that it's actually peened a little bit on both sides. So one side was peened already, and we can use a ball peen hammer to round over the other side and it actually wedges it in place so it's not going to slip back out. And then oil all of the little oiling holes, making sure that there is oil coming through. And I'm really, really happy with how this spins. Uh, it, before, it, was, it would not go all the way around, and now it's just a, a light crank and the whole thing runs. Very, very happy with how this came out. Very, yeah, pleasing. And it's got another couple hundred years to be used. Happiness. There you have it. This, uh, I love restoring egg beater hand drills. They're just, they're simple, they're easy to do, and once they're done, it is, it's just so rewarding and, and just a, a really cool tool. Uh, this particular one, especially with the, uh, with the spokes that are, are shaped and cast, it's just a, it's a beautiful old tool. Now, originally it was painted red and black, um, but I like blue and black, so I've changed it up to blue and black. And if you decide you want to get this one, then you can repaint it to your own colors. But um, this is a fun one, and it is a very basic model. Uh, so it actually has this holding the, uh, the large gear against the small gear. A lot of them actually will have a second gear on the back to balance them, uh, but this was the, the cheaper model. It's also missing the, the other handle that can come on the side, giving a little bit more stability if you have a third hand. One to crank, one to hold the top, one to hold the other side. <laughs> but, but they're a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I've got an old video where I restored the one that I'm commonly using. I'm probably going to be selling this one here soon on the Can I Have It Facebook group. So if you'd be interested in that, I'll leave a link to it down below. Every weekend, they actually have an auction on there where we can buy tools. It is one of the best places to buy tools currently uh, where you can buy just about anything and decent prices. And I try to sell at least one thing on there a week. So if you're interested in that, you'll probably see this popping up on there soon. So that'll about do it. And uh, this was a fun one. Hope you liked it. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. If you thought I should have done something differently, let me know that down below there. I learn a lot of things from things that people put up and say, hey, why don't you do it this way? Well, I'm always learning new things. So thank you for providing that. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, everyone here on the channel who is a member. Everyone scrolling over on the side, you are making this channel happen. So thank you for that. Without you, this channel wouldn't exist. And I say that every week, but I mean that entirely. Uh, without patrons and members, you're the ones keeping this going. You'll notice that I don't have any sponsors in this channel. People don't pay me to, to show off things and, and say things for them. I get to say what I want to say so that you guys can get the beneficiary of it. So you are the sponsor. Thank you for that. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. You know... I have used these things for years, but never, ever have I ever a single time ever beaten an egg with this.